What's going on, guys? Eula, the captain of the Knights of Favonius Reconnaissance Company and owner of the best thighs in all of Mondstadt is finally here. I was late to the party in putting out a full Eula guide, as this character is pretty complex and I just could not get all of the testing I wanted to done last week, so in this video we're going to focus on my top tips to get the most out of Eula and answer some of the questions that I have seen being asked the most. If you guys find this video helpful, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. Although Eula is mostly a physical damage dealer, which is typically underperforming compared to elemental damage, to no surprise of my own, Eula is a very strong and free-to-play friendly main DPS at Constellation Zero. So let's get straight into my best tips to get the most from Eula. First, let's talk about Eula's optimum rotation. In general, the rotation being shown is the one that myself and other community members have found to get the maximum burst stacks, but also be the most consistent and easiest to pull off. Not everyone, myself included, are experts in animation canceling or find it worth the trouble. This rotation is press E, burst, N4, hold E, and then another N4. My original thought was that because her burst resets her elemental skill cooldown, it would be ideal to use her hold skill prior to her burst, because although her elemental skill can stack twice, only one stack is required for the cryo and physical resistance shred. However, with two stacks instead of one, her hold skill will deal two instances of additional damage, one for the stack of Grimheart and the other for the first passive talent which deals 50% of her base lightfall sword damage, which will greatly increase her burst stacks. This sequence yields a total of 14 stacks and is the easiest to perform in my opinion. I was also able to find a second rotation with less burst stacks but a little more overall damage. This rotation is hold E, burst, press E, N3, animation cancel into N2, hold E, and then another N3. This gives a total of 12 stacks, but does take advantage of the additional hold skill damage and extended resistance shred duration. However, this combo is much more difficult to pull off, so in general, I don't recommend it over my original. The downtime between her bursts is best spent swapping to your supports between press E skills to battery Eula, proc superconduct, shield, or provide any other supporting functions to set up Eula for her next rotation. We'll talk about supports and some additional tips for actually obtaining max stacks later in the video. Cryo Resonance is without a doubt one of the strongest elemental resonances to take advantage of for any cryo DPS, as the free crit rate makes it much easier to build characters by eliminating some artifact RNG and allowing you to invest more into crit damage. With that said, you're also likely running an electro character on your team to proc superconduct, as it is the easiest way to do more damage with Eula and is almost necessary with a large number of enemies in the game. One of my Eula teams I've been running consists of Eula, Fischl, Beto, and Diona. In this fight against the cryo reg is fine, you can see that with Oz present and Beto's ult up, the electro aura is consistently applied to the cryo reg is fine because of the rate of electro application and the consumption of cryo and the superconduct reaction. If we only run Fischl, who is a no-brainer support for Eula, we only see the Electro Aura for the majority of the time, unless we have a second Cryo unit with their burst applying Cryo to the enemy. This is because the current Cryo characters struggle to keep up with Fischl's Electro application, so it will be very challenging to make use of the Cryo Resonance, and your build should account for this. Kaya seems to be the cryo unit who can keep up best with Fischl, so he could be a good choice to provide some extra crit rate. With that discussion out of the way, I want to talk about how important crit rate is for Eula. Outside of Eula's optimum burst rotation, she'll likely perform two to three elemental skills before her burst is ready to use again. Taking the entire sequence into account, and assuming Eula does not normal attack outside of her burst window, the Lightfall Sword damage at 14 stacks makes up about half of her DPS output. That is huge. This can only be used once every 20 seconds at best, and without really good stacks, this duration may be extended. If this attack does not crit, you can lose 25% or more of her damage potential. Because of this, I would recommend running a higher than normal crit rate on Eula of 70 to 75% if possible at the expense of some crit damage. This will even take me some time to achieve, but is my endgame build goal. Okay, let's talk about energy recharge, how much is needed, and the best battery characters for Eula. Eula is a main DPS unit that in my opinion really benefits from energy recharge. Now that doesn't mean it's absolutely necessary because her normal attacks hit extremely hard, so she'll still deal a lot of damage outside of her burst, but I find her much more fun and satisfying to play with high burst uptime. 
I've spent a lot of time testing different team comps and different energy recharge amounts. From this, I've come to two major conclusions. At minimum, EULA wants around 130% energy recharge, and EULA hugely benefits from a cryo battery. The best battery characters for EULA are Diona and Rosaria or Kaya. If Diona is being run as a battery, it is best to run a sacrificial bow to reset her elemental skill cooldown. At Refinement 5, the Sacrificial Bow can reset the cooldown on her E-Skill every 16 seconds, and her E-Skill generates 5 cryo-energy particles, so she can get 10 cryo-energy particles every 16 seconds. Rosaria and Kaya are essentially equal as batteries for Eula if they're using a Favonius weapon. They each generate 3 cryo-particles from their elemental skill, which is on a 6 second cooldown, and the Favonius weapon generates 6 energy, or 3 non-elemental particles, every 6 seconds at Refinement 5. Kaya also has the ability to produce two elemental particles when he freezes enemies. So if Eula is on the field to intercept these particles, Diona will provide a maximum of 37.5 energy every 20 seconds, while Rosaria and Kaya will provide a maximum of 43.3 energy every 20 seconds, with Kaya having the potential to generate even more. So Rosaria and Kaya are technically better batteries, but all of these characters work really well. I do think Diona is significantly easier in general to fit into a Eula team as she also fills the healer slash shielder role, but Rosaria is able to provide crit rate and physical resistance shred at Constellation 6. Okay, next let's briefly talk artifacts because I did the math on the different physical damage artifact sets and the damage potential difference is probably less than you think. This means that there are quite a few viable options and you may be able to save some resin farming if you already have some good artifacts. I've been farming the Pale Flame domain almost exclusively for the past month and only have a couple decent pieces. The artifact sets considered are four Pale Flame with full stacks, two Pale Flame with two Bloodstain, two Bloodstain with two Gladiator, and four Gladiator. The normal attack combo sequence for all these sets is very close, with four piece Pale Flame winning at full stacks only by a very small margin. Hold skill damage is also very comparable. The real damage difference comes from the Lightfall Sword Explosion, with four piece Gladiator performing the worst and four Pale Flame performing the best and about 27% better than the four piece Gladiator. The two mixed sets produce very similar overall damage and are both very viable. I'd stay away from the four piece Gladiator, but I think all the other three options are very strong and you should choose whichever provide you the best overall substats and stat ratios. Let's quickly discuss forming teams for Eula and my general tip. I actually think forming teams around Eula is a bit difficult because in most cases you want a cryo battery character and an electro character for superconduct, which only leaves one additional slot to fill. The best all purpose team that I've found so far consists of Eula, Fischl, Singcho, and Diona. As previously mentioned, Diona serves as the cryo battery, shielder, and healer, which leaves a lot of flexibility for the remaining two spots. Fischl is here for superconduct, which should be utilized in most, but not all, Eula teams. And Singcho is here for off-field damage, crowd control with the freeze reaction, and also allows Eula to proc the shadow reaction for additional damage. Okay, so this is my favorite team, but Singcho is pretty much best in slot in every team, so this may not be practical for you. Singcho can be swapped here for Beto to make a very free-to-play friendly comp. Beta works perfectly with Fischl to supply her energy particles, and even more additional electro particles are generated from the electro resonance. She also provides AoE electro damage when her burst is active, and is overall just one of my favorite characters to use. The second team I've been using that I really enjoy when I do not need a shield consists of Eula, Fischl, Rosaria, and Jean. Rosaria fills the cryo battery position on this team and provides crit rate. This team specifically makes use of Constellation 2 Jean, who provides 15% attack and movement speed to the party, allowing Eula to do more normal attacks and making stacking during her burst even easier. Constellation 2 Jean can be swapped here for Bennett or Zhang Li for different benefits. I do want to touch on resistance shred because stacking this becomes not optimal at a certain point. Looking at this chart of enemy physical resistances, you can see that for non-shielded enemies, the highest physical resistance we encounter is 70%, with 10% being much more common. Once enemy resistance is below 0%, resistance shred decreases by half and it can be more valuable to build for increased damage. Between the 40% resistance shred from Superconduct and the 25% shred built into Eula's kit at skill talent level 10, we're at 65%, which is enough in most situations. I do not think it is necessary to continue stacking resistance shred and is more valuable to swap in a unit that provides damage buffs or utility, such as Lisa's defense reduction, Bennett, or an animal unit for grouping. 
Units like Lisa and Shinyan are very valuable as they provide multiple damage sources. They are just not units that I enjoy using personally. Because we have characters that can reduce physical resistance, Superconduct is not a necessity and your Electro unit can be swapped for two of the previously mentioned supports for similar results. The last topic I want to talk about is crowd control. I underrated how important this is for Eula's kit. Crowd control becomes very useful not because she deals a lot of single target DPS, but for another two reasons. Number one, she kills mob enemies so fast that during her burst you lose stacks running to the next enemy, and number two, larger enemies teleport and or move very quickly. I've found that both Sing Cho and Zhang Li are great for larger enemies, with Sing Cho actually winning because his crowd control can extend through her entire burst duration. Sucrose and Venti are both great for medium sized mobs such as those on floor 11.1 and 11.2. These techniques are the only way I've been able to achieve max stacks against some content consistently. Sucrose and Venti have less overall viability in a Eula comp because these units are typically best when paired with elemental based DPS units, but they work much better against lower HP enemies than Sing Cho or Zhang Li. I actually underestimated the amount of shatter damage that Sing Cho can provide as well. Shatter damage scales off the character level in Elemental Mastery and has the second highest transformative damage multiplier after Overloaded. While shatter cannot crit and doesn't scale off physical damage bonuses, it is physical damage and is dependent on the physical resistance of enemies. Therefore, it works very well in a Eula comp where her team is built around reducing physical resistance. You can see in the clips that shatter damage increases from 2,622 to 3,933 per hit on these enemies with high physical resistance and superconduct alone. Between Eula's normal attack, Sing Cho's shatter damage, and Sing Cho's rain swords, a single normal attack is doing well over 20k damage. Well that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys found this video helpful, please consider subscribing down below. I put out Genshin videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.